Every gym rat knows that nutrients, dedication, and a good workout are vital to hitting your gym dreams. Maybe that is a protein powder. Maybe that's a good breakfast. Or hey, maybe a good energy drink. But with what seems like a million options out in the world, how will you ever choose? Well, have no fear because Bang Energy is here. Touted as the energy drink to end all energy drinks, Bang came blasting into the scene with high energy social media and posts full of claims to make anyone swoon. Gone were the days of a quick blast of energy followed by horrific crashes. Bang would never make you feel that way. They advertise themselves as the no sugar solution to your wildest dreams. Just one quick swig and you're ready to take over the world. But one of the best parts about Bang? Well, they had a new special never before seen ingredient that was sure to make your workout the best you ever had. Sure, you've probably heard of creatine before. It's basically in every pre-workout you've ever tried in your life. But Bang, Bang had something different. It was super creatine. Their patented special ingredient was supposedly proven to make your workouts last longer and your muscles bigger, no strings attached. This was the drink of dreams and practically every gym owner jumped on the opportunity to sell this new product to their patrons who of course excitedly took the bait. Then suddenly Jack Owok, self-proclaimed science mastermind announced that Bang wasn't just hitting your gym goals. Oh no, it was for hitting your brain goals too. Super creatine wasn't just for your muscles, it was for your brain. With the greatest invention in history, Jack had apparently developed a drink that according to him, slowed the brain's aging process, promoted peak concentration and prevented Alzheimer's disease. Sure, the product did have an insane amount of caffeine and absolutely no scientific proof to back up its claims, but they had a cool TikTok ad and an eccentric owner. So what could go wrong? Well, as it turns out, a lot could go wrong. Super creatine definitely sounded a little too good to be true. And a healthy energy drink just sounds like a lie. And the science genius might not be what he says he is. So yeah, a lot could go wrong and a lot did. Despite its rapid rise to fame and its claim that Bang would never make anyone crash, it seems like the company itself didn't actually get that memo. Because unlike its drink, they sure are crashing down hard and it has been one hell of an eventful fall. So what's the real story of Bang Energy? Let's get into it. Hello everyone and welcome to The Corporate Casket. I'm the Illuminati and today we will be talking about the healthiest energy drink in the world that has rapidly fallen from grace, Bang Energy. Through the years, Bang has had its share of bizarre and groundbreaking stories, but no story looms quite as large as the man, the myth, and the legend himself, Jack Owok. The eccentric, seemingly uncontrollable millionaire seems to always be ready to step in front of the camera. He absolutely thrives in the limelight and developed the Bang brand in a way that seemingly mimicked his personality, loud, insane, and full of half-truths. He started small, entering the supplement industry while he was teaching high school in South Florida, but he had a dream and soon he would create Vital Pharmaceuticals, AKA VPX Sports. The company started with a simple goal in mind, produce the highest grade university proven sports nutrition supplements and performance beverage in the world. After a few years of concentrating solely on the supplement category, the company soon took its biggest step, energy drinks. From there, Jack simply exploded in popularity, His wild personality seemed to translate straight to his business and for better or for worse, people responded. He created the energy drink Redline, the second strongest energy drink in the world. The tiny packaging did absolutely nothing to warn people of its power. And as people came to find out, it's danger. After all, it was coming from a company with the word pharmaceuticals in it. Why would anyone assume that that would be dangerous? It was supposed to be healthier than the others. At least that's how it was portrayed. However, quickly after its release, the world started to understand just how much punch was packed into that tiny bottle. Consumers from all over were beginning to experience a range of horrific health impacts after consuming the drink. Anything from chills to sweating to rapid heartbeat and even high blood pressure. This healthy, with plenty of air quotes here, healthy energy drink seemed to be the exact opposite and multiple lawsuits were brought against the company for false advertisement and failure to warn consumers of the dangers of the red line. 
But Jack and his company seemed relatively unfazed. Their newest, brightest product bang was sweeping the nation. And Jack was right there in the middle of it, promoting his love project with flair. Hashtag bang energy was everywhere on social media. Jack hired anyone he could to build distribution, even stealing people right from under Red Bull. Over 1000 influencers from across TikTok and Instagram were hired with the sole purpose of developing and promoting the marketing blitz of Bang. There were no rules. Do whatever you want, just have Bang in the background. That was a direct quote, by the way. Now, every video was relatively carefree, fun, and marketed specifically to a younger audience. Women were dancing in parking lots in bikinis, and of course, Bang was sitting in the background. But no one seemed to advertise Bang quite like Jack did. As his new empire began to rapidly take off, Jack swapped his button downs and muscle tees for bright and obnoxious blazers with Bang written all over his workout gear. Every new social media post contained his personal social media handle. As the Bang brand grew, Jack's outlandish behavior grew right along with it. He was ruthless with his company. Allegedly, he was known for firing people public execution style, copying and pasting multiple employees' determination emails. When employees breached non-compete agreements, he spent millions of dollars suing them, forcing some to leave the energy industry for the rest of their lives. Most importantly, he answered to no one. Most companies have a board of directors and outside investors. Jack, on the other hand, did not allow that to happen. It's a one-man show, at least according to him. He is all about power, and that's exactly what he put into the world. But he is just as ruthless in the promotion of his ultra-special products. He promoted Bang anywhere and everywhere and claimed that his healthy energy drink could do virtually anything. He is Bang energy, according to him. I exude energy, I am energy. At conferences, he runs around the stage while moderators beg him to sit down. He's got Bang energy. This is Bang, Bang doesn't sit down. It runs around the stage. And I'll give it to him. Seeing a 60 year old man run back and forth on a stage and refusing to sit down would definitely have me intrigued about what exactly he was on, but I don't know if it would make me want to run out and buy whatever the hell that ended up being. For some, seeing Jack Owok, a weightlifter himself at peak energy levels every minute of the day was the perfect advertisement for the product. But for others, his rather bizarre and sometimes erratic behavior left something to be desired. And in the long run, the eccentric millionaire who started the company is probably the same one that actually brought it to its knees too. Jack Owok isn't just the CEO of Bang. He is the chief science officer too, a fact that is wildly unsettling when you look a little deeper into his background. Sure, he was allegedly a high school teacher. And I say allegedly because some sources actually claim that there's no proof of him holding any type of science degree. Some claim he was a substitute teacher, but not a full-time teacher. We're pretty much just believing his word here, which I don't really want to put any weight on if we're being honest. If he was a science teacher in six different disciplines, as he claims, I'm obviously not insinuating that science teachers aren't incredibly important and amazing, but at the same time, it doesn't make me feel all too great that the CSO of a company has no further science background. Usually just to get hired at a company like this, you would need to have an extensive background in research. But in this case, the leader has nowhere near the background you would expect. This quickly becomes even more concerning when he shoots off about random health benefits for his drink, benefits that have no possible way of being physically accurate. According to him, other energy drinks are dangerous, stupid, and quote, life-sucking. Bang, well, they're not life-sucking apparently. They created the healthiest energy drink of all time, and it can do just about anything. Apparently, even cure Alzheimer's. And that's right. In an 11 minute video posted to YouTube, which is now conveniently privated, Jack makes the claim that his energy drinks could reverse the aging process and help with all forms of dementia, including Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and Huntington's. I wish I was making that up. He credits the magic energy drink because the special ingredient, super creatine, is what gives you those miraculous benefits. The website even backed up his claims, saying it can increase your mental function. Sure, some research has shown that creatine can help with physical activity for a short period of time, but to help with Alzheimer's? Well, it seems a little made up. And unsurprisingly, that's because it is. There seems to be some growing evidence that creatine could help with cognitive processing, but not enough for anyone to make the claim that it has proven to work. 
the scientific community is still very much at odds with the idea. Yet Jack Owalk likes to claim that it is a scientific fact and his company, apparently, is just way ahead of the game when it came to energy drink science. One small little teensy weensy problem though, Bang never actually says how much of their supposed super creatine is in their drinks. It's nowhere on the cans or bottles, on their website, it's nowhere. It just says it's there, that's it. And that seems a little bit suspicious to me, but beyond their super creatine claims comes the concept that Bang is just so much healthier and oh yeah, safer than every other energy drink ever. Jack proudly proclaims that consumers went to choose Bang because it didn't contain, quote, harmful amounts of sugar and highly suspect ingredients like D-glucolactone contained in Monster. Apologies if I didn't quite pronounce that right. This is not my industry. This is not my type of chemical language I'm used to speaking, but this word. This was only proven in one study, by the way, and usually you need more than just one in order to actually verifiably say something's true, but Jack doesn't seem to understand that. The scientific method, making sure that your claims are repeatable consistently, no, we don't believe that here at Bang. And sure, Bang doesn't have the amount of insane sugar of some other energy drinks, but does that mean it's actually healthy to drink or even safe for the matter? The short answer is no. While most of the advertisements were specifically geared towards younger people with brightly colored ads spewed across the most popular social media platforms, multiple entities swept in trying to warn young people under the age of 18 that this energy drink may not be for them. Keep in mind, this is literally the same company that created Redline, the drink that contained so much caffeine that four teenagers had to be hospitalized after drinking it. It's not really the company I would trust with my health, And as it turns out, Bang isn't that much different from Redline either. Bang has a whopping 300 milligrams of caffeine in it, which would basically be the equivalent of downing over three strong cups of coffee at one time. And that is an absolutely insane amount of caffeine. And sure, that can be tolerable for most adults. I know not everyone, but for a fair amount of adults. But for children, you know, children, the key demographic for the drink sales, yeah. That's not great and it can actually be incredibly dangerous, leading to multiple side effects, including jitters, raised blood pressure, and an increased heart rate. All things that are bad for children. Now I know, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get the naysayers. Well, Bang doesn't advertise to children. And it's true. Bang does say that it is not recommended for someone under the age of 18. However, when you look at their advertisements, where they run them and who they're actually targeting, it's almost exclusively young people working as influencers. Kids are not particularly well known for heeding the warnings written in small print on labels. I know I was not as a kid. We've seen it time and time again with weird and bizarre trends. Kids don't read the small fine print. Still, it's not just the caffeine that leaves you questioning the overall health of what Jack touts to be the healthiest energy drink ever. In their list of ingredients, there are multiple components of the drink that raise more than a few eyebrows. One of them is sucralose, an artificial sweetener that has been shown to decrease insulin sensitivity in young and healthy volunteers. Of course, nowhere on the label does Bang say how much of each ingredient is included. So again, it's a bit concerning. Oh, and yeah, Bang doesn't seem abnormally unhealthy, but calling it good for you is definitely a stretch, especially if people aren't drinking it in moderation. But moderation doesn't seem to be ideal in the advertisements. It seems like the more bang, the better. Jack Owak constantly disparages the competition for their drinks, telling his customers that every alternative would undoubtedly make them crash, cause health issues, and of course, does not contain the oh-so-magical ingredient, super creatine. He seemed to miss out on one teeny tiny little detail while doing this though. Usually, companies don't take kindly to companies constantly disparaging their brand and they definitely don't take too kindly to another company lying to do it. So to be frank, Monster came up and bitch slapped the fuck out of Bang publicly. So it's time for some lawsuits. It turns out that when you continuously trash talk your competition and make repetitive claims about the supposed health of your energy drink, you're bound to get sued for it. Who would have thought? It all started in 2009 when Monster Energy Co. and Orange Bang decided to sue Bang Energy for trademark infringement. And at first, all seemed well. The three companies came to a settlement agreement and everyone went on their way selling their little energy drinks to the world. 
Then VPX released Bang Energy RTD and everything came crashing down. Soon, Monster and Orange Bang joined together to accuse VPX of breaking the settlement agreement and infringing on Orange Bang's trademarks. Meanwhile, Monster decided to bring yet another lawsuit against VPX, this time for their false advertisement. The lawsuit brought against VPX and Jack Owak himself claimed that the company, along with the CEO's advertising and marketing scheme tricks consumers into believing they are getting something they are not. Bang is marketed as a modern day snake oil. Now, according to the lawsuit, the company had lied about the super creatine, its health benefits, and the fact that it's the healthiest energy drink on the market. The first page of the lawsuit is honestly just an incredibly fun read because it just shows a running list of all of Bang's claims followed by some form of their lying. Now, I've read a lot of lawsuits and I mean, I've read a lot of lawsuits, but this one is actually particularly funny. Most are really dry or really serious. This one, really fun read, got to admit. I mean, one of the first lines is just, it's great, take a listen. According to defendants, Bang is nothing short of a miracle drink that delivers benefits and cures that have evaded scientists for decades. I admit it, you chuckle, the absolute fucking sass, I love it. I live for this when lawyers get absolutely sassy, like, yes, please give me it, I love it, it is great. But seriously, like giggles aside, the lawsuit goes on to list the plethora of misinformation represented by Bang's advertisement campaigns. And of course, takes a shot at Jack's qualifications as the chief scientific officer, which says are based exclusively on his previous stint as a high school science teacher. The whole lawsuit literally reads like an insane satirical piece. But what was even funnier was Jack's response. Eccentric as always, the CEO slash CSO decided to release a press statement arguing against almost everything in the lawsuit. And yes, it is about as insane as you'd think it is. He claims to be the most innovative and prolific scientist in the history of sports nutrition and performance enhancing beverages. And he goes on to say that he probably does more science in a day than Monster has ever done. And I'm just gonna say, and I hope this is pretty obvious, but if someone says they do science, That's a little weird and it should be a bit of a red flag. He never says what type of science. He never says experiments. He never says research. He never specifies anything. He just does science. That's a red flag or 10. Now, Jack goes on to dispel pretty much every claim in the lawsuit, continuously pointing out that Monster is just the worst thing ever, which don't get me wrong, Monster is not great. But when you're being sued by a company, the common response isn't usually just outrageous slander, just saying. Is he running the PR for his company too? Because he should fire himself and hire an actual PR company because there is no way a lawyer or a public relations specialist would have approved of this behavior. Now, the company took it a step further when they decided to sue Monster for trademark infringement, a step that they're probably wishing now they never took, but hindsight is 2020. At the time, Monster claimed the lawsuit was merely an attempt to shift attention. Then they responded by expanding their original lawsuit. This time, they claimed that Bang's main pitch to their customers, their magical super creatine, was a hoax. Additionally, Monster accused their competitors of stealing trade secrets from former Monster employees, an accusation that, considering Bang had a history of hiring people out from under their biggest competitors' noses, certainly was not difficult to believe. And of course, what was Bang's response? Well, they claimed that Monster was just jealous and living up to its reputation of being an overly litigious bully. They would never lie about their super secret ingredient and stealing trade secrets, preposterous. At first, Bang was almost acting like the lawsuits were funny, but it was Monster that would be laughing at the end and of course, right to the bank. Suddenly, an onslaught of decisions was coming out against Bang Energy, starting with a $175 million penalty for the original trademark suit. Bang Energy tried to appeal after claiming they were shocked and disappointed, but the decision was upheld by a California judge the following June. Then came the big boy lawsuit, the one that proved that almost everything Bang Energy and Jack had been saying about their healthy energy drink was utter and complete bullshit. I know, I'm absolutely freaking shocked, but the proof is in the pudding. It turns out not only was their super creatine not doing anything they advertised it could do, but that it also didn't even exist. That's right. After a lengthy trial, it was announced that Bang Energy had no creatine in them, despite that being their entire advertisement. 
In September of 2022, a judge awarded Monster Energy a staggering $293 million in damages. A huge chunk of that was for the false advertisement, with the rest paying for tortious interference, which means they interfered with Monster's ability to make money and for stealing trade secrets too. Now, about a year, year and a half ago, I made the original Bang episode. So I know at some point, like right now, many of you might be thinking, didn't Blair cover this like a little bit ago? You're right. And before obviously this judgment in September, I didn't actually have the complete story of Monster and what was going to happen. So right like five minutes before this is about where the story ended. But now this is where stuff gets interesting. Monster's trial team immediately celebrated their massive success, saying that the verdict proved what they had been saying all along. Bang achieved its wild success based on widespread deception. The two decisions levied against Bang Energy are some of the biggest awards in the history of the Lanham Act, which accounts for false advertising and trademark law. So Bang Energy was just having a string of bad luck. To make matters worse, while they were fighting these lawsuits brought up against them by competing energy drink companies, they were also stuck in multiple other lawsuits, including a class action suit brought against them and their own lawsuit against PepsiCo, their former distributor. The class action suit brought up by Tiffany Nguyen and William Muscara alleges that VPX had misrepresented their ingredients to customers, which as we now know, they did. Not only did the company mislead their customers as it states in the lawsuit, but it also violated the Food, Drug and Cosmetic Act by including false information on its labels which once again, they did. I couldn't find the results of this lawsuit or if it's even been settled yet, but considering the current state of the company, let's just say they have bigger things to worry about at the moment. Apparently, all the other lawsuits just weren't enough for Bang Energy because they had to add one more. This time, it was them suing another company and food and beverage giant, PepsiCo. The two companies had reached an exclusive distribution deal back in March of 2020, but it took only eight months for it to turn sour. Seemingly out of nowhere, Bang Energy announced it was terminating its exclusive contract with PepsiCo, claiming they were unsatisfied with the distributor's performance. No one seemed to know what that actually meant considering they had only been partners for eight months, but Bang was adamant that it wasn't a healthy relationship. Soon, Bang would file a lawsuit against PepsiCo claiming that they had used intimidation tactics with independent distributors and major retailers like Walmart threatening lawsuits against anyone who fails to purchase Bang Energy exclusively from Pepsi. Basically, Bang claimed that they had ended their contract and Pepsi claimed that they still had exclusive rights to distribute Bang's products. It was a breakup gone wrong. And since then, the two companies seem to have reached an agreement, letting Pepsi still distribute Bang until their original contract date ends in 2023. Jack claims that Pepsi was trying to destroy Bang from the beginning. And if that's true, they seem to have done a damn good job of it considering how things have been crashing down around them. With multiple lawsuits still pending and half a billion dollars owed to Monster Energy, Bang Energy and its parent company VPX began to panic. Clearly, this was too much to handle. A fact that became readily apparent this year when the company officially filed for bankruptcy. And before we get into the details of the bankruptcy and the lack of a future for Bang, let's go ahead and have a moment to thank today's sponsors. So the first sponsor is me. And I just wanna say that if you guys are not following me on my other social media, including Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Twitch, other channel, Illuminati with a T-E-A at the end, you should be. I'm uploading shorts, TikToks, we're doing live streams. We also have a Patreon if you weren't aware of it, some cool benefits and shenanigans going on over there. Make sure to check it out. That was kind of it. Thank you. Oh, and because I'm an idiot, links are in the description box. Just click the link that says Linktree link and it's just a neatly organized list of all of my social media and where you can find me. Today's episode is also sponsored by Function of Beauty because your hair is unique and your hair care should be too. Function of Beauty makes products that are 100% customizable with ingredients designed and formulated to meet your specific hair goals. Now, if there's two things about me when it comes to hair care, it's the following. One, I live in Colorado, so I have very dry hair. And number two, I love the smell of peaches and Function of Beauty lets me have it my way. They offer over 54 trillion possible formulations and each one of those are going to be vegan and cruelty-free with no sulfates or parabens. And you can go completely silicone free too. First, take the hair quiz designed to build your hair profile and you can select up to five goals with mine obviously being, I've got dry hair. 
Then you get to choose your color and fragrance, or you can go dye and fragrance free. Though obviously I've chosen the peach scent. Then you're going to get your freshly filled formula delivered straight to your door and prepare for good hair days again. And they even offer discounts and benefits when you subscribe. So start giving your hair the personalized care it needs. Go to functionofbeauty.com casket to take your hair goals quiz and you'll save 20% on your first order when you subscribe. No commitments and you can cancel at any time. Go to functionofbeauty.com casket to let them know you heard it from our show and get 20% off your first order. That's functionofbeauty.com casket to take our hair quiz and save 20% on your first order. In true Jack Owak fashion, he seems to blame anyone but himself for the financial crisis his business finds itself in. Of course, it wasn't the lying, false advertising, or stealing trade secrets that caused Bang Energy and VPX to freefall. It was everybody else. Shortly after the Monster Energy lawsuit verdict was announced, VPX filed for bankruptcy saying, "'This filing is a restorative action to help the company recover from recent challenges, including multiple lawsuits that impacted the company's short-term outlook. Calling these multiple lawsuits challenges seems a bit misleading to me. These were not challenges, these were bombs going off for a company. A judge basically announced that they had been lying to everyone for years and were nothing but complete frauds. That's not a challenge, it's a lot closer to a company death penalty. Of course, it doesn't help that Jack Owak doesn't seem to acknowledge this at all. Instead, he blames PepsiCo for their swift downfall, saying that they had a premeditated plan to destroy Bang from day one. It wasn't the lying to their customers or constantly disparaging the competition. It was the distributors. Sure, Jack, sure, Jan. But he claims to have a plan and says he's excited for the future. This company was founded on the determination and a relentless passion for giving our customers and consumers what they want. And we will continue to do so. I know we will successfully emerge from this process as a stronger company. And it seems awfully optimistic, but okay, I'll bite. What's the plan, Jack? Well, first things first, the company needed a loan and it seems simple enough, but with Monster Energy breathing down their neck, it's a little easier said than done. While in bankruptcy proceedings, the company was met with objections from their rivals as they tried to beg a bankruptcy judge to allow them to receive a loan. Lucky for them, the judge decided to cut them a break and allow them to tap into $34 million from a group of banks. Oh yeah, and I forgot this little fun detail. They already owe those banks about $350 million. So I feel like that's going to be a problem in the near future. Meanwhile, the company is working under chapter 11 bankruptcy, which allows them to continue their business operations while going through their proceedings and attempting to work out deals with their competitors. So if you happen to see Bang Energy around in stores and find yourself slightly confused as to why the product is still available despite everything going on, don't be so shocked. Although remember, they do lie about their product. So maybe avoid buying from them for a bit if the super creatine was your main motivator to purchase. And since it's very public breakup with PepsiCo, the company says that it's going to go back to its previous distribution model, direct selling to stores. Maybe that will work out for them in the end, maybe it won't. Even after trashing and suing PepsiCo though, it seems like Jack Owak might be up to his old tricks. You know, hiring his rival employees from right out of nowhere. And let me explain. In a bizarre turn of events, Bang Energy recently announced that they would be appointing a PepsiCo former executive, Kathy Cole, to COO. So good old Jack, back to his same old tricks. If you can't beat them, hire them, right? One thing is for sure, Jack Owak won't be taking the easy way out and is adamant that despite his company's multiple legal battles and bankruptcy, he's not going to be selling off his pride and joy anytime soon. When rumors began to spread in August that Keurig and Keurig Dr. Pepper, I guess one thing, was interested in buying Bang Energy for almost $3 billion, Jack quickly shut them down, saying he would never sell Bang Energy for that amount. And that just to me sounds like he's got a price tag, someone just has to match it. But who knows, maybe Bang will come back bigger and worse than ever. But for the time being, it seems like the company itself is in need of an energy boost, and they certainly won't be getting it from their super creatine that doesn't exist. But with all of that being said, that is where I'm going to end today's episode of The Corporate Casket. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something new today. And if you did, make sure that you're liking, following, and subscribing to stay up to date on all the latest episodes. I do wanna thank you for making it to the end of the episode. It does mean a lot to me. And of course, I want to say thank you to all of the patrons over at patreon.com Illuminati 
Thank you all for your continued support, your opinions, our conversations. You have all been absolutely fantastic and I have been honored to meet such an amazing group of people. So thank you all again for tuning into today's episode and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.